Welcome to a new video everybody. Today we're going to go ahead and upgrade the brake pads and the rotors on the Optima. Now I wasn't really due for a replacement on either and that actually kind of depends on where you drive, how long you drive, uh, how hard you are on your brake pedal, things like that. Uh, but I figured since I'm upgrading everything on the car anyway and doing these videos that I might as well go ahead and show you guys what to do. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the kit that I got and all of the tools that we'll need to get it done. And we'll kind of go through the process of what we're going to do and then we'll get them on there. Alright, so here's everything that we're going to need for the install and it actually kind of looks like a lot right now. But once I go through everything, you'll see that this is going to be a pretty simple process. Up here we've got some safety equipment. We of course want to make sure that our eyes are protected and we want to make sure that the car is not going to roll anywhere. So we've got a nice little wheel chalk that we're going to stick behind the wheels of the car that aren't coming off the ground at the time. We've got our key and a breaker bar for getting the lug nuts off. And then we've got a couple more sockets and our torque wrench. Now we're only going to need like two of these sockets for the calipers over there. I went ahead and got my whole kit though, just in case I need anything else. We've got some jack stands and a jack. Now, of course you wanna make sure that your jack stands and your jack are able to lift your car. Now the Optima is, I wanna say a little over 3000 pounds. So that's less than two tons. So we've got a two ton jack and three ton jack stands that should do pretty good for us and then moving over to the actual rotors over here uh, now we actually picked up some drilled and slotted rotors which should help with I believe it said that was gonna help with heat dissipation and a little bit of uh, brake dust is going to actually escape from these and not get so you know covered on here and cover up uh, our wheels and keep them looking nice or a little bit longer. Um, and as you can see, these ones are a bit thicker than these ones. Uh, these are for the front because the car is front wheel drive. So that's where our stopping power needs to be. And we also picked up some ceramic brake pads. Now I upgraded to ceramic from just the regular, uh, it was like some kind of aluminum alloy because they said these will actually last longer. So of course you won't have to replace them as quickly. And then anytime you replace your brake pads, you want to get new hardware, the little clips that hold them in there because the old clips that are in those calipers can wear down and if you put new pads in there it can actually wear down the new pads quicker um, also we have a C clamp and you're gonna see why I'll need that here in just a little bit uh, there is a piston inside that caliper for braking that we're going to need to push back um, but again I'll show you what that's for here in a little bit so now that we've kind of gone through everything we're going to go ahead and get the car lifted up and start the install Alrighty, so I ended up being a little bit too low for my jack and had to use my ramps and some wood to help me out here but I've got the jack stand and the jack there holding the I believe that's the lower control arm of that wheel uh, if that's not correct me in the comments I'm sure somebody knows exactly what that is but we've got both of those and the ramp holding the front of the car up and we've got our wheel chalk way back there behind the back wheel so that nothing is going to move on us so you can see back there so what we're going to do now is go ahead and take this wheel off and basically we're just going to do this one at a time that way I can make sure that these stands and everything are holding up good Alrighty, now that we've got the wheel removed, we can go ahead and access the bolts. You're going to take a 14 millimeter socket and take that bolt off right there. And then there's another one, stick the camera back in there, right there that you're gonna take off. Those two are holding on this piece of the caliper that the pads go into. And then after we've got that removed, we're going to take a 17 millimeter socket and we're going to take 
that bolt off right there and then there's another one further down there that you can't really get to until this part is off so we'll get that off of there and if you're doing the brake pads then you can pretty much just fast forward to the end of the video after i get this piece off of there to put the new pads in because that's all you'll need to do but we're going to do the rotors as well so if you're looking for that stick around now that we've got this part of the caliper off holding the pads I can actually see it's a little bit different from what I saw in some of the other videos you can't just pull the pad straight out because of this little lip right here what you've got to do is you've actually got to push the pads more towards the inside and then you'll be able to slide them out and of course if you're not sure if you need to get some new pads or not yet you can check the tread on them i've still got quite a bit of pad left there you can see it's not really time for me to get new pads yet but again i was going ahead and upgrading everything anyway so we'll just sell these or do something with them and now that we've got both of the pads out you also want to make sure that you're getting these little clips out that's kind of what i was talking about earlier with if you don't replace these but you put new pads in you can wear your new pads out quicker because these have got wear and tear on them so make sure that you get new hardware as well now all that we need to do to get this rotor off is go ahead and take these Phillips head screws out. We're going to use our impact driver for that. Uh, those may be pretty well in there because they were probably put in with an impact driver. Um, and then we're going to lightly tap on the back of the rotor with our rubber mallet like you saw me doing to those bolts on there because it's probably on there pretty good. That'll just kind of loosen it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get that off of there. Alrighty, now that we've got everything off of there, we can go ahead and basically just reverse the process. Now with these new rotors, I went ahead and got the drilled and slotted ones from R1 Concepts. They're part of the E-Line series. I got a pretty good deal on them and the ceramic pads. And they actually tell you which side is the right side, which side is the left side on the box. So pay attention when you're taking them out. And then to differentiate which are the front and the back for my car, because it's front wheel drive, the beefier ones are going to be in the front there's one of the rear ones you can see it's not quite as thick as these other ones so we're gonna go ahead and put this one in the front put the uh, little screws back in there and then we'll put the new brake pads in and put the caliper back on and I'll show you about pressing down the piston that's inside that caliper Now that we've got the pads back in there, we can go ahead and put this piece of the caliper back onto the rotor. Uh, now, a couple of things. You're gonna wanna make sure that the side of the brake pad without the rivets coming up is backwards. That's what the piston is going to use to help you know, push the pad in so that it grips onto your rotors and helps you brake. And then you also wanna make sure that that little wear indicator, piece of metal right there, is on that back side. If we can kind of zoom in there right there of course it's going to go in a little further once that piston compresses but that right there is going to tell you when you need new brakes or not if you start hearing a scraping sound then that means that that little piece of metal right there is touching up against your rotors so now that we've got everything back in there we've got the new clips the new pads and then these new little metal pieces i don't know exactly what those are for i guess it helps kind of hold everything together in there um, but now that we've got all that assembled we can go ahead and put this back on put the bolts on and then we'll put the uh, part of the caliper with the piston back on and we'll be done with this wheel
Alrighty, so now that we've got that piece of the caliper secured, we can go ahead and worry about this piece with the piston in it. And as you can see, it's come out just a little bit there from wearing the old pads down, and that's not enough space to be able to fit this new stuff in here. So we have to go ahead and compress that piston back inside, and we're going to take and use one of the old brake pads to help us. We're gonna go ahead and kind of position it like that, and then we're going to use our C-clamp to help push that back inside there. But before you do that, what you need to do, or at least what I've been told and heard from people, is that you need to go ahead and come over here and open up the tank back here for your uh, brake line, uh, your brake fluid reservoir. That way you don't build up any pressure in here and have any issues because that piston is operated by the fluid that's here inside of that. So now that we've got that open, we can go ahead and compress that back down and then we'll be able to move on to another wheel. Now that we've got the wheel back on, we can go ahead and secure our lug nuts. And remember, you want to do these in like a crisscross, kind of like a star pattern. That way you can make sure that they are all getting tightened enough to where they need to be so that none of them will pop off. So we'll go ahead and get those tightened back on there. Once you have everything done and all of the new rotors and pads are on there, make sure that you go ahead and retighten the cap for the brake fluid reservoir back there. And then you're going to go ahead and get in your driver's side and press on the pedal a few times. Now I went ahead and already did it just to make sure I was doing the correct thing, but you'll feel that your pedal will go all the way down and you're pushing out all that air from the brake line. And then once you've done that, you can feel that the brakes are hard to press again. That means that they're making contact with the rotors. Now for the back wheels, you're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and loosen those lug nuts before you get the car all the way off the ground or the wheel all the way off the ground. Otherwise, it's just going to spin and you're not going to be able to take those lug nuts off. And one thing that I just realized I didn't really touch on earlier whenever you're doing the backs you want to go ahead and make sure once you've got the car lifted up that you take the emergency brake off the emergency brake has a little mechanism on the inside of here and it's actually on the inside of the rotor that expands outward almost like the old school drum brakes and that'll make it very hard or maybe not to where you can do it at all to take the rotor off and put the new one on so once you've got everything jacked up and you're in a good you know secure position go ahead and take your e-brake off and then you'll be able to do the back rotors and that's actually my bad the e-brake being on shouldn't allow the rotor at all to move but if you go to you know take the lug nuts off and you're applying a lot of leverage or pressure you'll see that it'll slip a little bit so you want to go ahead and make sure that the e-brake is completely off so that you don't accidentally strip any of it now that we've got everything back together we're not quite done just yet we've got to go ahead and break in the new pads or do something called bedding in Basically Basically, you want to bring your car up to about oh, 40 or 50 miles per hour and then brake down to about 10 miles per hour and do this over and over again. I think I did it for uh, maybe like 15, 20 times and you're actually going to start smelling almost like a burning rubber smell. That's your pads starting to get worn in and they're taking off. Uh, it's like a film that's on the outermost part of the pad and the outermost part of the uh, rotor that's usually put on there to make sure that you know nothing happens to it in shipping or if it's stored you know in a warehouse for a long time it doesn't start to degrade due to you know heat or moisture getting to it so basically you're just burning off that outer coating and making sure that everything is working good and of course there's a lot of different methods for bedding in that just seemed to be the one that worked the best for me uh, it also depends on like what types of pads you're using and rotors as well Thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out the video. If you have any questions about the install or about the rotors or pads or any of that, let me know in the comments. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below to R1's website if you want to check out some new rotors or pads for yourself. Again, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the video. I hope to see you in my next one.